Chemical reactions are really at the heart of cellular biology. It's how the cell does what it does. But so far, we haven't exactly talked about what is a chemical reaction. How does it work when we draw something like this? What does that mean? So I want to tease that apart a little bit because this can be intimidating. Now, chemical reactions could be really kind of boring and almost invisible like this one, or they can be dramatic, right? Like lighting a match. That's a chemical reaction. So we want to talk about what a chemical reaction really is, how it works, and I also want to put that in the context of buffers. Buffers stabilize pH in our body, a really important function. And I want to talk about a couple key ones, the bicarbonate buffering system and the phosphate buffering system. And when it comes to chemical reactions, at the heart of it, it's just a moving around of electrons, usually by breaking and reforming those covalent bonds that hold atoms together. So when you see an equation like this, it's not an equation like this. It's not a mathematical equation. In this one, these equal this. It's saying they're the same. But clearly, these are not the same, right? These two molecules are not the same as this molecule. They're different. And furthermore, they're not in equal quantities necessarily. This double-sided arrow means these two things combine to become this, but this one can also break apart to become these. It's a reversible chemical reaction. And depending on the conditions inside the solution they're in, there may be a lot more of this than these, or vice versa. So it's very different than a mathematical equation, and we don't want to treat this as an equal sign, and we don't want to just assume that these become these, and that's the end of the story. Most chemical reactions are reversible. They go both ways. Well, let's take a look at this specific reaction on the bigger screen. So here's our equation, but let's take a look at the molecules themselves and draw out a molecule of water and of carbon dioxide. So there those are, and the reaction this way just combines those two. So I should have one, two, three oxygens, which this tells me over here, that's just conservation of matter, one, two hydrogens, and a carbon. I'm going to put them all together. I'm going to start with the carbon. And probably the most straightforward way of putting those together is this. That forms the molecule called carbonic acid. That's what this is. Normally, if you were to put carbon dioxide in water, let's say you just blew bubbles into a jar of water, that reaction would happen fairly slowly. But in the body, we have enzymes that make that pretty strong, and most of it gets converted into carbonic acid. Now, that's just a really quick overview of chemical reactions. If you want to know more, that's for chemistry class. Chemical reactions are important for a whole variety of functions within the body. One of those is to stabilize pH. This is a buffer system. And if more acid is added, then it absorbs the acid. If a base is added, it absorbs the base, keeping the pH stable. That's the idea of a chemical buffering system. Well, so far in this chemical reaction, we've only created an acid, carbonic acid. But a chemical buffer consists of a weak acid, like this one, and a weak base. We have to have both. And so there's another part of this chemical reaction. So here's the other part of that chemical equation. And it's also reversible. If carbonic acid gives up one of these hydrogens, it becomes a hydrogen ion. And this changes the pH, right? Because that's what pH measures. It becomes more acidic. That's why that's an acid. But there's still the rest of this molecule left over, which becomes what we know as bicarbonate. These two together, since this is a weak base and that's a weak acid, make up a buffer. So let's look at the screen to see how that would work. And so above, I've written the chemical equation. 
And down below, I've drawn the molecules out, which are a little more helpful for looking at them. So notice over here on the right, I have that oxygen with a negative charge, which had that hydrogen ripped off, becoming a free hydrogen ion. All right, so that starts us out. How does this create a buffer? Well, if we added to the solution, remember both of these are in solution, an acid which added hydrogen ions to the solution, this would naturally want to attach to this, right? And essentially that becomes this. Another way we could look at that is if we added hydrogen ions, looking at the key chemical equilibrium, we have increased the amount of that driving the chemical reaction to the left. That shows how it could stabilize pH if you decrease pH, made it more acidic. What about the other way? Well, that would mean a couple things. If you added hydroxide ions, a strong base, then these would probably react together and form water. Does that make sense? Seems like a, a logical conclusion. That means that this effectively decreases in solution. That's what a base does, right? It decreases hydrogen ions, and that would drive the reaction this way, creating more hydrogen ions to replace the ones that were lost. So now we've buffered against the increase in pH. One more look at that. Another type of base, it doesn't always have to add hydroxide ions. Anything that you do that decreases hydrogen ions is something that is, makes it more basic, right? It increases the pH. So taking that simple approach, we would say that if that decreases, same thing is going to happen. This chemical equilibrium is going to be shifted to the right. We'll add more hydrogen ions and stabilize the pH. Now you've seen the chemistry trick with the baking soda and vinegar. People make volcanoes and all kinds of stuff. It's a great safe chemical reaction. But I want you to understand it a little bit better because it actually is a similar system to what happens in our body. So let's take the baking soda. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. And so it's bicarbonate, but we've replaced the hydrogen ion with a sodium ion, positively charged, and so it forms a salt. And so we have that salt, which can dissolve in water. So that's the bicarbonate part of things. So we just have this in solution, but not much of this. I'm going to replace vinegar with citric acid instead. It's a little stronger acid, and this is a powder. So I just want you to see that it works in, with something other than vinegar. There's no real magic to vinegar. What we're going to do is increase the amount of hydrogen ions by adding that acid. And since this increases, it's going to push the reaction this way. And when there's more of this around, it's going to push that reaction that way. And we're going to end up with a lot of CO2 bubbles. Let's see how that works. All right, you ready? Here's the big moment. So I've dissolved sodium bicarbonate, the baking soda, in water. I'm going to add just a pinch of citric acid. And let's see what happens. Well, that's pretty good. It's a lot of fizzing. And remember, that's because I added acid, which we didn't have in the solution drove the reactions that way, and got a lot of carbon dioxide bubbles. That's it. Well, baking soda and acid is just one part of the equation. This is a buffer system. So there we tested what happened if we add an acid. Well, what if we remove an acid or make the solution more basic? What would happen then? Should be the reverse. Last time we added acid and created CO2. This time, if something happens inside the bloodstream, it drops the amount of hydrogen ions, right, making it less acidic. The pH goes up. I know these are all kind of weird in terms of up and down and which increases. Let's just focus on the hydrogen ions. If those decrease for some reason, 
then that's going to encourage this reaction and this one. The equilibrium is going to get shifted this way and produce more hydrogen ions, stabilizing the pH. These went down, these chemical reactions brought the hydrogen ions back up, kept it stable. Well, that's just the chemical buffer system that we've concentrated on so far. But there's more to the buffering system than just that. There's breathing as well. When we exhale, we're affecting this, right? We breathe out carbon dioxide. Our red blood cells are actually carrying it in this form. By the time those blood cells get into our lungs, they end up converting the CO2 back and we exhale CO2, so this decreases. All right, so if that decreases, how does that affect the pH of the blood? Well, let's look at our set of chemical reactions. If this decreases, that's upset the equilibrium, and so that's going to encourage that chemical reaction. That doesn't seem that significant necessarily, until we look over here and say we shift the chemical reactions to the left. What does that do to pH? Well, there we got to look at this. If the chemical reaction is going that way, that means there's less of this, right? The blood becomes less acidic. And so when our blood gets too acidic, we exhale and get rid of that excess acid. So that's the physiological buffer system. We actually have chemical sensors sensing both CO2 but also the pH of our blood. And when we sense that the acid level is getting too high, right, or pH is getting too low, then we start breathing faster to get rid of CO2. That's why when you exercise and you produce more CO2, you breathe harder to keep the pH stable. Nice trick. Oh yeah, so what if you hold your breath? Yeah, that's a good question. What would happen if you held your breath? Well, it's a nice thing about chemical equations. They kind of give us a way to analyze it a little more simply. So if we held our breath, that means CO2 levels, they go up or down in our body. Yeah, they'd build up. So we'd have more CO2. So that would drive the reaction to the right, correct? So. If this one got driven to the right, then we'd have more carbonic acid. And then we would also have more bicarbonate, but more importantly, more hydrogen ions. So our blood would become more acidic over time. So the inside of cells don't have a ton of carbonic acid, but they have lots of phosphate in there for making ATP, DNA, all that sort of stuff. So here are a couple of different forms of those phosphates. The only difference is this one has two hydrogens and this one only has one. So when the pH changes, we're changing the amount of hydrogen ions, right? Okay, so if the amount of that increases, what's that going to do to the equation? It's going to shift it left or right? Correct, it's going to shift it that way because this is increasing. We want to come back to equilibrium and the reaction is going to go that way. So what really happens is these are encouraged to form a bond. Just snap them back together and then you have that chemical. There you go. So it's mopping up extra hydrogen ions if they're added to solution. And there are a lot of chemical reactions inside the cell that do that. What if some chemical reactions cause the hydrogen ions in solution to decrease. What's that going to do to this chemical reaction? It's going to shift it this way, right? Basically causing that hydrogen ion to pop off, go into solution, and then decrease the pH again, make it more acidic. So there's your phosphate buffering system. Pretty simple, but you have to have an acid and a base. Well, there you go. Chemical reactions and buffers. Chemical reactions, we're just rearranging all those chemical bonds, and one of those reactions results in buffers keeping pH stable. pH is incredibly important inside of our bodies, whether that's inside the cell or outside the cell in the bloodstream or interstitial fluids. We 
want to keep that stable. It's kind of like keeping the room temperature stable for us. It's no fun when the temperature shoots up and then plummets down. One minute we're sweating, the next minute we're shivering. Uh, molecules kind of feel the same way about changes in pH. They get pretty grouchy when it goes up and down dramatically. And chemical buffers keep everything nice and steady and keep them all happy. Well, it may not be the most exciting aspect of living beings, but it sure is an important one. And I hope you appreciate it a little bit more. That's it for this time. Until next time, just remember, life is good. That wasn't bad. What would you give it on a scale of one to two? Yeah, like a two. It's pretty good.